Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our first episode of Building with Open Talk series. I'm your host, Monik, and we also have Kyle with us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about video chat embeds and how you can add live video into your web application with, in a matter of minutes. I'm going to hand it off to Kyle for a quick introduction. All right. Hey, I'm Kyle. I'm one of the product managers on the ecosystem team for TalkBox. I'm just going to do a quick overview of embeds. Uh, go. So I'm going to this to present mode. So put simply, embeds make adding video to your web application easy, so you can spend more time on the rest of your application. Uh, so it kind of adds more explanation there. When you're building a web application with uh, live interactive video using WebRTC, it gets pretty complicated pretty fast. There's signaling, turn servers, stun servers, media servers. Whenever you want to scale or add any kind of logging or testing, it, it just becomes really difficult. So uh, one thing that OpenTalk solves is um, it makes that whole th the whole situation easier by removing all that negotiation and infrastructure work. Basically, you just need to authenticate, connect, publish, and subscribe to start a basic video call using OpenTalk. Now, Embeds takes that one step further by getting rid of all the, uh, those four steps and just condensing it down to a simple embeddable snippet. So you create an embed code, you add that code to your page, and it works. No authentication server needed. You don't need to worry about connections, publishers, or subscribers. Uh, embeds are for specific use cases. Uh, you can't use them in any situation, mainly for one-to-one -one or small group use cases. Uh, also, right now, they're only available for web, uh, and there's no advanced features available that you can get with the regular OpenTalk API, like recording, screen sharing, or broadcast. Also, as far as UI goes, there is some customization available, but it's a little more limited than what you can get with the OpenTalk API. So anything beyond this use case, you want to move on to the standard OpenTalk platform. And I'm going to hand it off to Monik to give us a demo. Thanks, Kyle, for that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, so just give me a second while I get that going. Um, you should be able to see my screen now. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier for everybody to see. Um, so this is your TalkBox dashboard. This is where you can access your account and all the projects that you have. Uh, just to get really, you know, nitty-gritty in the demo, we're going to click on projects here and create a new project. Um, you'll be presented with two different options. One is an embed project and one is a standard project. Um, Kyle mentioned the features about the embeds where you can, you know, have a one-to-one -one, uh, and where standard is where you want to explore all the features that TalkBox has to offer. So we're going to click on the create embeds here and in this you'll ask for some questions. So we're going to call it building with open talk and let's call it embeds. And I'm going to specify a container size. So essentially, this is how big your Windows uh, frame would be. So 800 and 640, that sounds about right to me. And for the sake of this demo, we're going to do it at localhost. So I'm going to whitelist a URL. This is really important because we want to make sure that the embed code that's given to you, nobody else can access it on another website. So please whitelist your URL here that you want to use. Um, and because we're not building anything, I'm just going to leave that as none and click Next. So now our product is being created. As you can see, we're given some um, options on choosing. I'm going to click on Go to over Embed Overview so we can see our whole project in action. Here is iframe option and JavaScript. So you have two options of picking a, a you know, code that you want to add to your website. I can click on the JavaScript option or the iframe. Um, and we'll get back to this just in a little bit. Down here, you can see your consumption. So how many minutes have you actually consumed? And you know, you want to filter by date, weeks, or months. You can do that with options, um, this calendar picker right here, and also just by one week or current month, anything like that. Now, as we go down, uh, these are the uh, settings that you set initially. So you can change this configuration. So if I pressed edit, I'd be able to save and change up, uh, change up the URL or the project name or anything that you want. Um, so let's get started with this. I'm going to go ahead and access my terminal. And here, I'm going to go ahead and create a directory for this project that we're working with. So let's call this directory embeds. And let's change our change into the embeds directory. And now that's all we needed to do simply. Uh, we're going to switch over to our VS Code. This is what I use for my editor, but feel free to use what you like. And open up this embeds folder we created. And let's create a new file in here, and let's call it index.html, because we're going to keep it very simple and very basic. Let's start off with a simple HTML tag, and let's do like a little head tag. We'll give it a title, and we'll call this building with open talk. Simple as that. And now uh, we're going to let's create a body tag as well, so we can add our JavaScript snippet in here. 
I'm going to go back to our Google Chrome and copy paste this. So click this copy button. And now I'm going to go back to my editor and paste this here. So as you can see, I simply just copy pasted it into a blank page. And that's all I really need to set up a video. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So after I've saved this, I'm going to switch over again to our Chrome C and our terminal so we can start a Python server. So I can do Python dash M simple HTTP server, and I can specify a port. In this case, we will do 3000 because I think that's what we specified in our whitelist URL. So I'm going to go ahead and verify that. Yes, that's right. So now we've started our server. We'll take a look if it's being started. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and do localhost and then type in 3000, and I should be able to see my video chat. So now if I click on this, you'll practically be seeing me on the other end because we're starting video chat. Now, in order to see multi-party in effect, I just copy paste this link and I press enter. And then obviously you click to start a video chat again and you should be able to see two of them. And I can keep adding more and more tabs. And as you notice, this is where the UI customization comes in. We are automatically taking care of this layout. Ma this layout manager automatically resizes the windows for you depending on the number of participants you have in this. Um, as Kyle mentioned, you, know, you can't really specify a, a container um, or anything. The view is automatically decided for you. Um, so if, I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to close this tab off. And on the other tab, you can see it's just two of us. Close this off again, and then it's just one of us. So now um, that's as simple as that. We've got a video chat. And I'm going to go ahead and build the server real quick, clear it out so it's a little easier to see you in the board. Um, so we saw a video chat now in what we call a local server. You know, we, we hosted it locally. We really want to see this in action. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a Wix site that I created. So I'm going to go ahead and open my Wix site that I already have. And I have this editor um, where I'm already editing HTML and uh, just creating some blocks. So I'm gonna, before I do any of this, I want to change the URL that I'm going to whitelist this on. So if I go here and change my configuration, I'm going to say, OK, this is a Wix website. So I'm going to go here and click Wix. And this container size is perfect, so I'm going to save this. and Actually, I'm going to make the container size a little smaller just for I wanted to show you that if I put this to 600 and let's say this 400 and save this, the code at the top does change on based on what you've done. So after we've saved it, we can see that this changed to 600 and 400. So please make sure to copy paste another snippet after you've changed your configuration. So copying this and we're going to go to our Wix editor. And let's actually create in HTML edit. So I'm going to go ahead and click more and go to this HTML code. And let's enter our code that we created. It's the, we're trying out the iframe code in this end because we tried out the script tag on the other end. And let's create the container size as big as we created last time. So we'll try to make this a little pretty. But it was 600 by 400. So we're just going to get to that simple range. And let's do that. As you can see, you're already seeing this message saying you're attempting to load an embed on a non-whitelisted domain because this is not the URL that we whitelisted. But that's OK, because when we see it live, uh, it'll work for us. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. And it's saving for us. And now let's publish this. So if I publish this website, now I can go View Site. And this is open for me. And I can click on this Live Lessons page where we've added our video chat. And I'm going to click Start Video Chat. And now you're seeing this. So it literally took us about a minute and a half to start a live video chat on any website that's out there. Um, so I can just, you know, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this link into another tab and click start. And now you can see two of me on that screen again. So really simple and uh, really easy to use. I'm going to head it off to Kyle for a little more um, information on how to generate dynamic rooms with this. Thanks, Monik. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen as well. So as you saw when Monik was creating uh, his embed, there are these snippets that get generated for, for embedding your embed on a page. Uh, if you might have noticed, there's a room parameter in every iframe and script tag. Uh, this room is basically equivalent to a session. Um, so anybody that's in the same session or the same room will be able to interface with each other. If you have different room names that you're connecting to, you wouldn't be able to see each other. So for example, 
if I created an embed with room equals room one, and I gave Monik the exact same room name, we would be able to talk to each other. But if his embed said room two, we would not be in the same room, right? Simple enough. So the reason we did this is to kind of add a little more robustness to, uh, to the embed and enable a few more use cases. So one thing that you can do with these dynamic rooms is create URL-based rooms. So as you can see in my example here, I have mysite.com room equals room one. You could use some uh, really simple JavaScript to pass that URL parameter into your page and create different rooms for different, uh, different meetings on your website. You can also use very similar uh, code to make user-generated user rooms. So in this case, your end user would go into your site. They would have a field where they can type in a room name, and that would generate a room with that room name, and then they can share that with their friends or colleagues. Uh, and then finally, probably the most powerful use case that you can do with these dynamic rooms is uh, use, building out a back-end framework that uh, uses these dynamic rooms to give you more control over how users connect, uh, what different types of rooms are created, you can integrate scheduling or add different types of extra communication like text chat. Um, so to kind of show this off, I'm going to do a, a demo that we have available as a sample app. So first, I'm just going to go to the Dev Center here. Uh, all the information in this webinar is available uh, on the embed guide page. So if you go to your talkbox.com slash developer, uh, this is the developer center. You can either click this video chat embeds down here or anytime in the sidebar, you can go to build your app and click on embeds. This takes you to the overview. Here you can see uh, kind of a basic implementation of URL-based rooms, and you can play around with that a little bit if you want by sharing it. Uh, and then as I said, all the information we've got over here uh, is in this, in this page. You can click on the sample app link at the bottom. This will take you to our current sample web app, which shows a one-to-one -one appointment sample using uh, the dynamic room creation. So this is available on GitHub. You can clone this, uh, fork it, and do whatever you want. And I'm going to kind of show you uh, what this sample app does. So this sample app was built to be a really simple demo. Um, we're, we're not worrying about UI or making it pretty or anything, just kind of exposing the different functionality that you can do with uh, dynamic rooms. So th this one is a doctor-patient uh, sample, but really this could be any one-to-one. -one. This could be uh, teacher-student. This could be customer-agent doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and enter as a doctor. So I have no upcoming meetings right now. That means I can create a meeting as a doctor. I would be able to choose when I want to do it. So I'm going to do one for right now so I can demo it for you guys. I can set the duration of 15 minutes. So I'll create that. I have a meeting right here today, right now. I could also go and create a meeting in the future if I wanted to. So I create. And so I can see here I have my current meetings and I have upcoming meetings. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up a new tab as a patient. So I'm going to enter as a patient. I can book a meeting. I see there's two meetings available, one right now. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And so now I can see I have a current meeting uh, that I can join because it's happening right now. And if I reload the doctor page, you can also see that somebody has claimed this meeting, and he can join the meeting. So as a doctor, I'm going to go ahead and join. I'm gonna, I can see how much time is left when the meeting started and when it ends. I'll click to start the video chat. And then I'll log in as a patient as well, and I'll join the meeting. And click to start. And just give it a moment here. As you can see, we have the publisher at the top right here and then the subscriber. So we have a one-to-one. -one. This is the two, uh, the doctor and the patient talking to each other. So you can use this code and adjust it for your use case. Uh, to kind of make it fit however you want. Uh, and that's available again on the Dev Center, just clicking this sample web app, or you can actually go to the sample apps page in the Dev Center where it's available at the bottom down here, along with lots of other sample apps. Uh, so, and then finally, going back to my presentation here, uh, we have a lot uh, kind of planned for embeds moving forward. We actually just added the ability to allow more than three participants. So. Uh, Generally, anything up to about five or six participants should be good. Uh, beyond that, it really is limited by the hardware and the network conditions. Uh, we're going to be adding multiple whitelisted domains. As you saw when Monik was setting up his embed, he had to add a whitelisted domain, and he had to change it back and forth depending on what he was doing. This can be kind of frustrating for people, so we're going to add the ability to add as many whitelisted domains as you want. This would be helpful for if you have a staging or dev environment along with a production environment, so you don't have to keep going into your dashboard to change that. Uh, we're also working on adding screen sharing to embeds. So this is will be the first kind of advanced feature available with embeds. 
And then we're also working on mobile uh, embeds for iOS and Android. So look out for some more information on these. Uh, uh, just to clarify, these are all embed features that are coming up. Uh, we'll also be working on some more sample applications uh, to kind of show off different use cases with embeds. I think that's it. Perfect. Thanks, Kyle. So as you can see, you know, these are some things that we're working on with embeds. But if you really wanted to use a lot of these features, you can go ahead and use the OpenTalk API, and you'd be able to cover all that that Kyle's already covered. Um, so now I uh, just want to mention that there is a poll out there, so please do take the poll and take your time to answer some questions because it will really help influence what the next episode on the uh, next episodes will be on the Building with OpenTalk series. Um, and I can see that there are some questions that have been asked. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some time now to answer some questions. So please definitely ask a question, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them right now. So let's go ahead and let's click on the first question. So I'm seeing that the first question uh, is to the first question is addressed um, that says, can TalkBox broadcast RTMP stream now in 720? If not, when is it scheduled for release? And the second question, so let's answer that one. How about you take a Sure. So, uh, um, so the RTMP at 720p should be available sometime in Q2 as a beta. Thank you. Um, that's a good answer. <laughs> it really is forward. And so now let's take a look at uh, the second question that's asked uh, when the same question. Is TalkBox stats summary API released and generally available? For those who don't know, we're reading questions off of the uh, off of the Crowdcast's interface here. If you click on the Ask a Question at the bottom of your screen, you can see the available questions right now. But to answer the question that uh, Monica just brought up about session summary API, that also is planned for a beta in Q2. Awesome. Thank you. And now we are going to address another question. So uh, it's another one about call kit and TalkBox integration. So we do have a sample application in our GitHub that talks about how to use call kit on iOS with OpenTalk. Um, and uh, so if, if you do have any questions on there, feel free to post a comment on the GitHub um, repo, and we'll address it. Or you can reach out to us um, at monic.talkbox.monic at talkbox.com, and we'll help you answer those that you have. Uh, next off, uh, there's a question about Ionic and TalkBox. Um, so we don't have any official support for Ionic at this time, but we do have a Cordova plugin uh, that you can use to add live video to Ionic, your Ionic project. It's part of our labs initiative, which means, once again, we don't support it, but it's something that we've you know, started a few months back and tried because we want to you know, extend our reach to as many developers as possible. Uh, we do have sample applications, so you can go to github.com slash opentalk and open talk ionic samples and you could see it in the ask a question i brought it out already so that link will show you a basic video chat and then there is the plugin which you can use to start uh, you know publishing subscribing signaling um, it doesn't support things like screen sharing at this time but that's something that we can definitely work with together uh, next uh, we're going to address the question about unity wrapper so we don't have an official Unity wrapper at this time, but we do have sample applications for Windows and Unity. And we, we have done some work internally on Android and Unity. And so we're going to work on it in a, hopefully in the near future and get that out there to everybody as well. Uh, but it's not something that we have available at this time for Android. But Unity is available on our uh, GitHub with Windows. Sorry about that. There's also a blog on the TalkBox blog where you can learn more about the Unity wrapper. Uh, with Windows, yeah. Oh, the Unity sample app. Yep, perfect. And now we're going to address the question on implementing buttons to live save recording. So archiving, uh, you can do an archive session really simply. So you have to have a server set up or, you know, where you can practically send a request from your client. So let's say the JavaScript SDK, and then you have this button, which the button makes a request to the server, and the server then using these OpenTalk server SDK starts an archive. I think this person's asking whether we can they can do archiving with embeds, and the answer is right now uh, it's not available. Uh, gotcha. We've gotten a little, some demand for it, uh, but it's it's not in the plans right now to add right. it any in the near future. So uh, pretty much have to resort to the API, which right. really is not that difficult to implement. Yeah, it's super easy. Um, and so that's you can do the archiving with the API, as Kyle mentioned, but not with the embed so far. So any other questions? 
once again, I'm going to bring it back to the polls. Please do answer the polls and comment about what frameworks and tools that are important to you so we can cover this in the future webinars. Um, if you like this webinar and you know you enjoyed making it with video chat embeds, please make sure to sign up for episode two, which is going to be using, building an electron application uh, and adding live video to it. So I think it's really amazing to do that as well. All right. I think that covers it for this uh, session. So thanks for joining us and see you next time. Take care.